Good morning, my friend. Today, I want to share with you an essential oil dilution chart that I've put together, and I think it's going to be a really cool tool for you. But I always like to start by saying, I'm Mary Howard RN with Powerline Health, bringing you another episode of essentially yours where we like to come alongside you and help you in your day and today i wanted to help you with essential oils i wanted to help you know when to dilute essential oils so we're going to go over um, a few terms and then i have a little chart that i want to show you when to dilute essential oils. Essential oils have many different usages. Knowing what essential oils should be um, diluted on sensitive skin, which we're gonna use an S for, and what essential oils should always be diluted, we're going to use a D for, and these are our hot oils, and what essential oils can be used directly on the skin, and those are what we call neat, and we'll use an N for that. All of these applications are very important. So when to dilute essential oils is one area that we're going to talk about. And then the application method is another area that we wanted I wanted to tell you about. And so what I did is I put them kind of together so they each have their own acronyms in a little chart. And so we're going to talk about application methods along with that information. It's also important to know where essential oils can be used. We've put together a list of application methods. All the oils can be used aromatically. This would mean in things like a diffuser or smelling them right from the bottle or maybe some diffuser jewelry um, or maybe even reed diffusers in your bathroom. So things that don't require electricity or things that do like a diffuser. Many essential oils are safe to use topically directly on the skin and we're going to use a T for that and then some of the essential oils, several of the essential oils actually, are safe to use internally and are as long as the essential oil brand is a therapeutic grade and we're going to um, signify that with a little I. We're going to be talking about skin sensitivity, so we're going to use N for neat, S for sensitive, and D for dilute, meaning you should always dilute. And then at the same time, we're going to talk about application methods. So A is going to be for aromatic, and all of our oils can be used aromatically. T is for topical, meaning that you can use them on your skin. And I means you can use them internally. And here is our little chart. What I like about this chart, and I want you to find this on our website, powerlineessentials.com, is that it has the name of the essential oil. And so you can mix this up a bit if you want to see the oils, starting with the Y's and W's or back with the A's. And then the first category is neat. Neat meaning the oils can be used directly on the skin. So what we've done is we've put them in this handy chart. So if you click this twice, now you will see all the oils that can be used directly on the skin. And there's quite a few of them. The next category that I wanted to show you is sensitive. So if you click this twice, now it will list them alphabetically what essential oils can be used on sensitive skin. In other words, these really should be diluted on sensitive skin. And as you see, some of your mints, those are ones that you wanna dilute on sensitive skin. And then these oils, we're gonna click this twice, always dilute. Now cassia is probably the least hot of these and clove is, is you can use that, um, just be cautious, test it on your skin first. Oregano you want to always dilute and time again, test it on your skin and see how your skin reacts. But these should pretty much always be diluted. Cinnamon bark, again, this will make your skin burn if you get it on full strength. 
it'll have a burning sensation, but that will go away and it won't actually burn your skin. And then of course our aromatic oils, and they're all going to be aromatic. The only oil that I noticed on the list that isn't that pleasant aromatically is pomegranate and personally turmeric for me. I just don't care for either one of those aromatically. But the um, Yarrow Palm is, is um, it's a very expensive oil and it's not used aromatically that much. It's used in skincare and internally. And then the other way that, um, then topical use of essential oils. So these are all the oils, if we click this twice, that can be used topically. And really, that is most of the oils. If I scroll down here, I am not seeing any that are not safe for topical use. Um, really the ylang ylang, I need to go back and tweak the chart. <laughs> because that can be used topically too. And then the last one is our internal use. And um, we're gonna click that again. And now we've got all these oils that can be used internally. But why I like this chart is I can see that, okay, cinnamon bark is safe to use internally, but it should always be diluted. So that would mean that if I use it internally, I would wanna put it in a capsule or I would want to put it in a carrier oil if, um, and then even sometimes in a capsule, like for example, oregano is great to use during cold and flu season. It's great to use with um, bacterial infections. Some people can't just put two drops of oregano in a capsule and take it. Some people need to put some carrier oil in the capsule with the oregano oil. And then I stuck another category in here. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of essential oils that are come out from our favorite company with carriers already in them. And then we have a few that are so hard to procure that that they aren't even sold by our company unless they're diluted. So that's why I put these as usually diluted. But these are our flower oils and they smell amazing. So below the chart, I have a few other things I wanted to talk to you about. Many of the tree oils are not recommended for internal use. So Arborvitae, Cypress, Douglas Fir, Spikenard, and Cedarwood. These oils are actually safe to use neat or directly on the skin though. Your pine oils have unique properties. Cypress, Douglas fir, and cedarwood have the unique ability to release or open up inflammatory pathways, allowing the cells to move more freely. They are especially helpful when applied to inflamed lymphatic areas. And the one that I use probably the most is the cypress. I'll take my favorite lotion that I use for sore joints and I'll add a couple extra drops of cypress to it and then massage that into like a sore knee and it will, re for me, it relieves that soreness on a deeper level for a longer amount of time. Some of our oils are oils of the Bible. There's several essential oils that are used in the scriptures because of their combination of amazing smell and powerful healing properties. The oils are one of those amazing sacred elements from our earth that give the body the tools to heal itself. For example, frankincense was revered as a sacred oil. Part of the reason that frankincense is held in such high regard is that if you are not sure what essential oil to use, they usually say choose frankincense because it is the king of the oils. Spikenard is also a biblical oil. Spikenard has many medicinal uses and benefits and was referred to in the scriptures as costing a year's wages during biblical times. It's not that expensive now, but it isn't inexpensive. And there are several oils that are spoke of in the, in the Bible. And it's kind of fun to go through the Bible 
and read through different passages and find what they used and how they used it. Diffusing essential oils in an essential oil diffuser is probably the simplest way to get the benefits. Just as some oils are hot and some oils are safe to be used neat, some oils take fewer drops in the diffuser than others. The big thing is to pick an essential oil that smells good to you. That's the place to start. If you listen to your body, you will know what you need. Then there are the hot oils. Those are oils like cassia, cinnamon, clove, oregano, and thyme. And those we delineated on the chart with the D in parentheses. These oils should always be diluted before putting on the skin. Put these essential oils in fractionated coconut oil to, to a consistency that is comfortable. For children, you want to dilute these oils as much as 10, 10 drops of carrier to one drop of essential oil. So dilute more for children and then kind of um, play with it from there. Many of the herbs and essential oils grow high in the mountains. And here's a frankincense tree. I just think they're so beautiful. Frankincense grows high in the mountains and in very arid regions. Lavender essential oil grows high in the Alps of France, and when it's grown there, it has unique properties that are not found anywhere else. Dilute your mint oils. We dilute oils like peppermint, spearmint, eucalyptus, and wintergreen oils on sensitive skin, not because they can hurt the skin, but as much because of they have such cooling effects that it can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. And you do need to be very careful not to get your mint oils in the eyes, especially, especially, but also the nose and the ears, it's very important and it's not very pleasant. If you do get them in eyes, nose or ears, um, to decrease the uncomfortable feeling, it is best to dilute the essential oil with a carrier oil, like fractionated coconut oil. There is also olive oil. You could use grapeseed oil. Um, the, the biggest reason we like the fractionated coconut oil is when they fractionated it, when they fractionate it, it takes the, the coconut flavor or smell out. So it's just a nice, clean oil. It also absorbs into the skin quickly so it doesn't stay greasy on top of the skin. Some of your thicker oils stay greasy a little longer than fractionated coconut oil does. Will essential oils burn your skin? Well, that's a really good question. Um, for, most, for the most part, hot oils or minty oils will not hurt you, but will be uncomfortable for a time. The only essential oil that I have personally known to actually burn the skin is oregano. It burns quite effectively though for some people, and some people have even been known to put it on warts and moles um, to help burn them away. But be sure if you do to put some kind of cream or lotion or the hard coconut oil around that area. Always err on the side of caution, especially with children. That I can't stress that enough. You just don't want to burn their little skin. So what about the citrus oils? Well, the citrus oils are the, those oils that I come back to a drop as a dose. Um, we're talking about lemon and orange grapefruit. They can all be used neat or directly on the skin but your lime and bergamot are a bit stronger and they should be diluted, especially on sensitive skin. The citrus oils is where I want to bring home that a, a drop really is a dose. So a drop of lemon in your water is therapeutic, but too much might not be very comfortable. Lemon is a cathartic and works quite well to get things moving internally if you put a drop in a glass of water. Wild orange is the mildest of the citrus oils and has the least harmful effects when used on the skin. And a big question about the citrus oils that I want you to be aware of is, 
Should you worry about photosensitivity? And I'm going to say yes. The rest of the citrus oils, lemon, lime, and bergamot, and grapefruit can cause what is called photosensitivity, and they will cause the skin to burn easily if you're out in the sun. The burns can be quite significant, and so you do need to be aware of this. If you have a favorite lotion, with these oils in it, you may want to consider switching to a different lotion during the summer. The the increased sun sensitivity can even happen as long as eight hours after the citrus oil has been applied to your skin. Why do you want to dilute essential oils? Anytime you have the opportunity, it is a better use of the essential oils if they are used with a carrier oil because the essential oils evaporate so quickly if they're on the surface of your skin. So dilute a carrier with your fractionated coconut oil actually helps you get a better use of your essential oils because it holds the oils to the skin. It also stretches the use of your essential oils, of course. So there's many unique uses of essential oils, and that's something I love to learn and share. If you are interested in learning more, don't hesitate to contact me. I do plan to put a PDF link of this of this handy chart. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, click over to our, our blog and download that for yourself. Otherwise, enjoy. Thank you for tuning in. And I'd love to hear your comments. What is your favorite essential oil? And are you looking for a new way to use that essential oil? I'd like to hear about it.